Divine Truth Spirit Experiences Discussion Experiences of people who have lived on earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. The title of the first part of this personal experience from spirits is Stuart's Progress and Study of Jesus, during which Mary Channel Stuart, a behavioral scientist who has been studying Jesus since Jesus was eight years old and has talked with Jesus two weeks ago, who talks about how the spirit body is affected by sin, observations of Jesus' spirit body, changes that occurred in Jesus at different ages, and the new discoveries. The session was recorded on the 3rd of April 2018 from 12 p.m. in Wilstel, Queensland, Australia. Good day, everyone. A few weeks ago, Mary and I spoke to Stuart, who we've had a couple of conversations with Stuart. The first conversation didn't last very long, but this conversation we had a fortnight ago uh, lasted for two and a half or three hours, I think it was. We had a very interesting conversation about science and how it applies to God and things like that. And uh, we were thinking that perhaps Stuart would like to come and have another chat with us about his past two weeks experience, but also about uh, our previous channeling, which is, which is something that he might have observed. It, um, these large groups of spirits who were attached to me over my lifetime, and particularly when I was young. So perhaps we can have a chat with him about those particular issues. So let's we'll see how we go. Hello. Hey, brother, how are you? Very well. Thank yeah. you for having me back. Yeah, it's a pleasure. <laughs> How's the last two weeks been? <laughs> very, very interesting. There's yeah. quite a lot for me to take in and, and understand. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a, a revelation, really, mm -hmm. and I've had to re-examine much of not just uh, my ideas and understandings about the world, mm -hmm. the universe, but also, as you know, inside of myself. Yes, yeah. Um, I feel quite excited and enlivened, in fact, yeah. uh, that it's as if a whole new level of uh, world of possibilities and understandings that I could achieve are attainable now. Yeah. And I didn't realize what kind of restriction I was placing upon myself. Yes. Yeah. So I'm full of excitement. Yes. I'm not sure that I have, uh, have been able to formulate uh, yeah. my experiences into coherent ideas <laughs> for you as yet. Uh, well, that's what it's like, isn't it? Yeah, when you do the emotional side of investigation, it's sort of like everything's a new experience and it's so exciting and everything and everything's happening so rapidly that it's very hard to have times of uh, quiet where you sit down and just contemplate yes. what's yes. really going on. I feel mm. fully mm. in the full throes of, of new learning and understanding. Yeah. And, and it's been quite a, a pleasure that um, some of uh, my consortium, has, uh, our con the, the group, the group that my was, friends, yep. uh, have come with me on this journey, or not with me, but have decided to explore the, the possibilities that you pointed out. For themselves too. Yes. Yeah, that's Not wonderful. all of them, which yep. is fine, that's yep. their decision, but um, it's it's been a time of great excitement for yeah. all of us. Yeah, that's good. Um, but I, I have immense gratitude and and I would very much like to fulfill your request to just discuss the issue of uh, spirit influence and attachment from my perspective mm. as it has been. Um, mm. And perhaps I'll be able to coherently mention a few things at the end about what I'm beginning to formulate now as sure. ideas. Yeah. And, and perhaps if we can just tailor this conversation a little for our viewers, because we want to sort of because, uh, you know, obviously uh, I've had the experience of being there, so I understand <laughs> what it's like. And, and, and rather than sort of presuming things for our viewers, I think we need to try probably explain things because obviously pretty much all of them haven't been there to know what this is like. So um, if we can sort of, we'll need to sort of be a bit descriptive if we can about the whole process. All right, so let's perhaps start um, with general comments, shall we, about uh, what you've observed with regard to spirits influencing people who are living on earth and and what you notice happens in terms of the intermingling, if you like, that occurs 
between the spirit spirit body and the and the the spirit body of the person who's on earth yes mm. yes uh, this as you can imagine has been uh, a topic or a, a phenomenon that has uh caused me to have great interest mm. uh, in years gone by mm. clearly i it's very obvious uh when there is a spirit someone such as myself who only has a spirit form who is influencing a person who has both a physical and spirit form mm. and when i say it's very obvious i should clarify that statement yeah, because so what, what things do initially, you initially initially it wasn't that obvious right. to me and yeah. i had to do some i saw anomalies that i couldn't understand and i had to um, do some work to investigate what was going on and there is some level of understanding here. Yeah. Uh, I, so I could speak with others and they quickly um, What sphere are you in now uh, after your progress the last month? I'm in the third, third? Okay. And, and it's just wonderful. Yeah, it's yeah. just wonderful. So, so, so when you I, say there's a lot the more anomalies. Uh, uh, could I explain a little yeah, further? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so um, yes, yeah, so I, what I was going to say is that it, obviously I have had a great interest in this because of the effect that it has on behaviour. Mm. And that is a very, that's a very interesting thing to me. Mm. Um, so if I could speak perhaps about the physical appearance mm -hmm. uh, and then some other things that I was able to investigate to perhaps a more limited degree than what I now feel is possible to investigate. Mm -hmm. So... Initially, um, because I was so interested in humanity and the Earth's life, as we've discussed previously, I was observing people and who are still on the Earth and their spirit bodies, as well as observing people here uh, uh, who just appear with a phys uh, what we call physical form, but it's the spirit, <laughs> spirit body. body. Mm -hmm. um, and I began to see uh, issues where there seemed to be uh, because obviously th the spirit form, no matter where we are, has different colours and different energy flows. We spoke about this, I think, in our last discussion. We did. Um, but then I would begin to see that it was almost as if there was another energy flow that it became, it began to impact on the energy of the person on, on, with the physical body. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't clear that this was another spirit body initially to mm -hmm. me, because as we are aware, those people who do exert a lot of negative influence, um, those spirits, if we use that term mm -hmm. uh, for the ease of conversation, the spirits who do negatively influence those people on earth, they do have quite a darkened condition and mm -hmm. often their form was not congruent with the uh, the spirit bodies that I was accustomed to seeing. Mm. And so initially I thought, is this some kind of disease in the spirit body that is almost like a growth or a, mm -hmm. um, what is this? Is this another energy? So is this another creature almost? Is this another um, animal almost? Uh, animal spirit body or something that's impacting on these people. Mm. Um, but I did some further investigation both through observation and discussions with my colleagues and eventually we did come to learn that this was uh, the potential for um, damage that could happen to the spirit form and that was very sobering for us mm -hmm. to to understand that the way we appeared could m change so much that it seemed almost a different creature so can i just pause you there for a moment so when you say almost looks like a different creature, for the sake again of our listeners, hmm. what what you when when you see a second sphere spirit, for example, mm -hmm. um, how do you see them? Basically, how do they look to you? And then if we can compare that with when you see one of these cre creatures, you probably would have called it in the past, but mm -hmm. one of these spirits who have darkened their condition so much, how do you see them? So, uh, spirit uh, in the spirit spheres mm -hmm. that I have uh, been in, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, especially in the second and third, 
appear very much like uh, it's it's congruent with uh, the form of a human on Earth. As it appears to another human. As it appears to another human. So Earth, there's yeah. heads, shoulders, yeah. knees, toes, arms. The, the, the whole thing. So you could say there's no deformation of their physical body with, with the exception of what seems to be diseased areas. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. And sometimes it's evident that there's issues with energy flow, there's different colours, mm -hmm. but essentially it looks like a human form. Yes. Now, when, when I first started to examine, uh, oh, and I should say, there, are, there is the case very often when I observed the Earth that I saw what appeared to be a, something congruent with a um, human form uh, influencing a person in on Earth, yes, um, in a in a fairly sort of in a fairly benign way, exactly, yes, exactly, yep. um, and I understood what was occurring there immediately because you could see straight away that that was a spirit influencing that person, and you could see the spirit's spirit body, and you could see the person's spirit body, and you could see the influence exactly, yep. and you and as time goes on, you become even more sensitive to the way that the communication is occurring. Mm -hmm. Uh, through uh, spirit body to spirit body and... Yeah. And that, the flow of emotion from spirit body to spirit body mm -hmm. influencing communication. That in itself was a fascinating area to, mm. to explore because mm. obviously that communication then affects the emotions and behaviours and thoughts of the person on earth and mm. that in mm. itself is fascinating. Yes. Yeah. Um, but to go back to this more what you call negative spirit influence, mm -hmm. uh, what we observed was it's almost as if the form, in some cases it's almost as if the form has sort of squished in on itself. Mm -hmm. And so the, the length of the body, the, the height, the head, the, all of that is almost like um, uh, melted mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, into itself mm -hmm. and so it appears more like globulous or like a cloud mm -hmm. um, and so so instead of appearing like looking like a human form it now looks like a very 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 distorted very form distorted that partially is recognizable as human if you look but most of the time a lot of spirits wouldn't even look would they it's like no it it's almost like a gremlin or yes. a, yeah. or, which is or, where these kind of ideas on earth came from, obviously. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And the color is very obscure. It's very dark yeah. and uh, many times appearing almost like a black cloud. Yes. But you can see a connection uh, with, with a spirit body and, and you can see the, um, oh, sorry, the spirit body of the person on earth. The human on, who's living on earth. Yep. Yes. Uh, and you can see points of connection and at times you can see almost as if they are sh a shadow over certain parts of the form of mm -hmm. the person on earth. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so does that answer your question? It certainly does. So, so when you saw this in first, like when you started to examine this first, as a spirit, you know, you, you would have probably been in the first or second sphere when you were examining these particular things, were you? Yes. And so what was your opinion then of what you were seeing? Well, initially, I, as I said, I, I thought, okay, this is a creature. Mm -hmm. And then I did more investigation. I realised, no, this is dreadful this is the capacity of the human to um degrade or demolish themselves to this point mm. uh, i still it took me some time to understand the correlation between well and i would say up until this point i haven't really understood the impact of emotion yes yep. <laughs> i understood that behavior mm -hmm. uh, was creating this degradation mm -hmm and repetitive uh, engagement of what we would call negative behaviour mm -hmm. was causing a worsening uh, of uh, um, condition in the person. So did you actually observe any worsen their condition during this period that you were investigating, where you, where you saw them start off in a recognisable form and eventually get into a more unrecognisable form? No, I can't say that I ever took the time to do that. Right, no worries. Uh, in some way... I believe I made the assumption that this degradation occurred 
either prior to passing right uh, or that spirits were almost visiting because those with a positive influence i saw to visit i could see that they visited uh, they didn't necessarily inhabit the earth all of the time yep um uh, some appeared to be there a majority of the time mm -hmm. but but i could see that they had a home as you would call it in the spirit world mm -hmm. and so I did make some assumptions about these lower forms that mm. I called them that they had already that they inhabited the lower realms of the spirit world mm -hmm. and visited the yes. earth. Uh, it was it was clear that some of them remained at the earth and attached now to people. Mm -hmm. Um, but I didn't ever take the time to observe a degradation of a spirit around the earth. Mm -hmm. In fact, I can't think of a time when I, it seems very pronounced that those who are in this degraded condition mm -hmm. um, are well established in that condition mm -hmm. when they lose their physical body. Mm -hmm. Although I mm. must say, uh, now that we now that I recollect, I have never seen the spirit body of a person on earth particularly resemble the creature form until the passing occurs. Mm. Do you know why that is? Yeah, no, there's, there's good reasons why all of that is the case. Perhaps before we answer that though, did you, did you ever observe the destruction of the um, spirit body of a person who was alive on earth? Well, yeah, I certainly, I observed a worsening of the spirit condition and I observe that in most people to some degree or another um, but I never observed it to the point that I talked about with the black cloud or the, the severely melted form mm -hmm. there are many people who are on earth now who have a, a severely well, I would call it, it is degraded form. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is grey, there's there's lack of definition in some areas of the spirit form. Mm -hmm. There's sort of holes or areas of knots of what is diseased colouring. Mm -hmm. well, you, you understand what I mm -hmm. mean by that? Mm -hmm. um, a lack of energy flow in certain areas. Certain people are, are closed at certain areas of mm -hmm. their, of, and it's quite evident mm -hmm. to visually view it. So there's certainly degradation that that we observe, and we have certainly been able to marry the correlation between um, behaviour mm -hmm. and degradation mm -hmm. to the point where we see causation that mm -hmm. the more a person uh, engages unloving behaviour, then they degrade further. Yes, now, of course. Now that. Now, if I just take you through your question for, for me, uh -huh. have you ever traced when a person actually part, one of those persons who had degraded their form quite significantly already that you could observe, mm. did you ever trace them after they passed? No. Uh, well, in certain circumstances, yes. But what appeared to occur, mm -hmm. so I traced them in entry to the spirit life mm -hmm. uh, and, and what, to the place of reception or, yes yeah. and beyond yeah um but what appeared to occur to me is that their spirit form had a certain condition mm -hmm. while attached to the physical body mm -hmm. then as they broke that connection and entered the reception place there was a lot of lethargy in the body mm -hmm. uh tiredness mm -hmm. um and once they passed the point of reception, it appeared that in some cases there was a rapid degradation of the form. Mm. And this is what my question pertains to. Mm. Well, during that phase of the rapid degradation of their form, that's when they engaged the addictions they learnt while they were on earth and they continued in them. But now they had the capacity to do it much more rapidly. Mm. As you know, the spirit has a lot more time in his hands. Mm. If we could say you're not really governed by time so much, mm. you can now engage your behaviour a lot more rapidly and with a far wider variety of people. 
your circle of influence now becomes greater. And as a result of the circle of influence becoming greater, you're now influencing more people unlovingly, which means your own behavior. Now, the law of compensation must act to correct that. And so naturally the law is going to cause a very rapid degradation after that point of your spirit body mm -hmm. in, refer in, in correlation to the amount of evil behavior engaged. So, so it is a change in what I had. Um, what I had thought was that it happened very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I thought that there must be some construct or some law or, that governed the. Um, I suppose the operation of the spirit form mm -hmm. in when attached to a physical body and then when dis, uh, disengaged from the physical body because I understand what you're saying about the engagement of the behavior mm -hmm. but in some cases it seemed to happen almost immediately so like an instant transformation from yes. a from a you know normal height sort of a person as you would appear on a to a compressed individual of a gaseous, almost gaseous nature. Yes, perhaps not that extreme, but yep. certainly um, an individual with some level of, of deformity, for want of a better word, in their spirit form as mm -hmm. at, up until the time of passing, then reception, then entry. And during that period, it seemed almost as if they flagged and they, they lost a lot of... Um, energy that was flowing in their body mm -hmm. and also almost immediately not to to the point of a gaseous form mm -hmm. which is why i thought those things were other creatures yeah. initially yeah um but at least to a compressed but, sort of a or, or a diseased just a, form more diseased yeah. and much darker in some cases and in a, in a very rapid sort of almost yeah, instant. almost instantly yeah and, there's, there's a number of reasons for it and some of the reasons are emotional and some of them are actually physical in there uh, the physicists in your group have they ever analyzed the correlation between the shape of the physical body and the shape of the of spirit body when the two are joined together in comparison to when they're apart because there are there are actually physical laws that govern the matter mm. that allows for a correlation between the two forms certainly there is um the spirit form is yes it is a certain way and in keeping with the physical form when when attached and mm -hmm. then there are some changes as we mentioned in our previous discussion as i know you're well aware of in the almost the physiology of the um, of the spirit body, mm -hmm. because there's more the senses that were there already existed, but now the person inhabits them more strongly. Yeah, uses them now. Yes, uses, utilizes, utilizes them, them yeah. primarily. Yes, and so there's certain changes that we were aware of, mm -hmm. but not to the point that there was a. A massive transformation and this this also um, this is not what I'm referring to I'm referring to what we or what you call the condition of the of the spirit body changing mm. and and what I'm suggesting is is the um, to, to a degree when a person is on earth they maintain a facade of their nature as mm -hmm. you would observe so so their nature in their you know their their inclinations their motivations in the which are which you could observe as colors in the spirit body um are present but mo a lot of the times people on earth don't act in harmony with those motivations mm. of nature because of external factors and influences such as the law of the land yes. and the what's accepted by society and so forth yes very obvious Yes. As soon as a spirit passes, most spirits become aware quite rapidly um, and a lot of times instantly that they are now no longer restricted by these particular guidelines, mm. these what you could call external guidelines. And now there is this underlying uh, motivation, desire, motivation to actually engage in unrestricted behavior based on what they feel. Now. As you know, the spirit body is maintained by two sets of desires or motivations. The first 
is what your current condition is mm -hmm. and the second is what your desire is mm. and the sets of desires that the spirit then engages happen instantly generally which automatically instantly darken and uh, degrade their body immediately mm. because their desires are now recognized and engaged mm. Mm. So it's not that it's, it was almost, I used to joke that life was catching up with them, that all of the things that, um, I suppose you could say that's true, mm. but it's more catching up with their emotional condition, mm. their, their actual motivations. And so it's not something where the physical body is providing support to the spirit form or providing extra energy or. No, well, as, as you would know, it's the other way around, isn't it, really? Y yes, the, yes, the spirit, f sorry, the, the spirit form powers the physical form, but mm -hmm. the, um, I had pondered that there may be some law, for example, mm -hmm. that dictated that while the spirit form was attached to the physical body, that it must mean, it may receive energy from a different source or it, uh, I, I don't know. No, that is well, as, as you also know, many people on earth receive energy from not even from their own, for their own body, from other spirits. Mm. You, you would have observed mm. that occurring Indeed, as well. Yes. So in many cases in people who are dark or in their darker condition on earth, people who are more unloving on earth, what's actually happening is that they are receiving energy to keep their spirit body inflated, if you would like, mm. um, to the condition of the physical body from other spirits who are also attached and you probably wouldn't have seen them because those particular spirits would have been more of the gaseous nature mm. and you probably wouldn't have observed that as the main reason why their spirit body was being maintained mm. so for example uh, say a drunkard on earth who drinks uh, way too much under normal circumstances he would die very quickly and um, and and without any other spirit attachment it's highly likely he would die you know, even within a few weeks or months, in mm. many cases, of, of, in a drunken's case, the body would degrade so rapidly if, you know, imbibing that amount of poison into the brain and, the, and to the, into the liver and kidneys and so forth mm -hmm. would normally cause a destruction of those organs so rapidly that they'd die within a few years at, at, the, at the most. Mm. And yet they stay alive for 50 years. And, mm. and that is only because of the numbers of spirits that are providing additional energy to maintain that body in order to get the codependent addiction of the satisfaction of the alcohol or the feeling of the alcohol that it gives them. Mm. And so, so many people live a lot longer on earth than their, than their, uh, their behavior would under normal circumstances indicate mm. for them to live. Mm. And those kind of people, of course, uh, once they uh, leave the uh, earth, you know, and they leave their physical body, those spirits can no longer uh, prop them up either because those spirits are in usually different locations. And what that means instantly is none of that energy is now flowing to the spirit body of that spirit. So there are a number of factors that cause the immediate, uh, what appears to be, uh, I suppose you could say, reduction of mm -hmm. the for spirit form. Mm -hmm. And many of them are related to you know, how much propping up the person got while they're on earth, what kind of condition they have, and the combination of their desires and their current uh, condition, uh, all having that influence on their condition and therefore on their bodies. And so, um, yes, I feel it's a fascinating field of study in mm. and of itself, mm. this issue of uh, influence. Mm. And certainly I have been aware of it and... Uh, fascinated by it in terms of how it affects the person on earth's behavior mm -hmm. um but yes i do i can see now the how i have been observing the energy even from the spirit bodies of other people who are attached to a body on earth mm -hmm between the spirit bodies of mm. different people mm -hmm. and so yes of course mm. i've it's foolish not to have uh, considered that mm. and this is where you know as we discussed in our first discussion it, like it's not 
easy to make scientific analysis unless you understand <laughs> a lot of what's precluding you from making accurate scientific analysis, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Well, yes, and it's, just, it's, it's quite a study mm. to observe the Earth life, um, taking into account the many different uh, influences and variables that mm -hmm. exist. Mm. Yeah, there are many spirits who are in very high realm still studying those particular mm. matters, of course, mm. you know, mm. and uh, obviously the higher uh, you you get in your ability to understand from the soul level what's going on, the easier it is also to understand all of those matters as well. Mm. Yeah, so, so getting back to our discussion, um, which we might have to pause in a minute because my bladder is starting to get uh, <laughs> full, so we'll just have a pause and we'll come back to it. But um, so, so with regard, we were discussing these particular, like, should we call them sort of nebulous, nebulous forms mm. that um, you uh, have observed, but initially did not believe that they could be people until you went through some processes of recognition yes. of that. Now, um, once, and even in our discussion a few weeks ago with Constance, you said you observed, you sort of thought of those kind of spirits as just almost like entities of some kind, but mm. not necessarily human. Mm. And, and there are many spirits, obviously, in the lower spheres who believe that, mm. uh, that they're not actually human entities, they're some, some other entity or that God created some other form of life that we just didn't know. They seem to be malevolent. And, and this is where in the hells of the spirit world, there are concepts of demons mm. uh, because of this as well, like concept of God created some kind of angel that fell <laughs> and become this new creature, you know? Yes. These kind of belief systems uh, come from the understanding that these kind of nebulous creatures must be some other form of creation rather than people who have degraded themselves. Once you understood that they were people who degraded themselves, how, how did that feel for you personally like? Well, I, I think I sort of mentioned that earlier. Mm. Uh, it's, it's quite shocking and it, almost um, fear inducing because mm -hmm. uh, initially one wonders, well, how does that happen? Obviously that was investigated more, but the, the potential to, to be in such a, uh, a terrible form was quite shocking and mm. scary. Mm. And and did it sort of cause you to worry about your own life in any way that you might end up in that form? Or? That's why it was scary. Yeah. Yes, yeah, because yeah. there was a feeling that, my goodness, I don't want to end up like that. How did that happen? How did that you happen? know, mm. I, um, yeah. that would be a terrible fate. Yeah. So in your analysis of, and, and perhaps probably is the best to have a pause here so that both Mary and I can visit the toilet. And then we will talk to you specifically about now that you sort of know that when you observed my body and the spirits we were just trying to talk mm. to, you, were you, you were present in that conversation for a yes. short period. You, you could see those particular spirits now. I'd be interested to know how you observed them when you were observing me, you mm -hmm. know, whether you sort of observe them as spirits or not. So if we can sort of proceed along that line with that discussion Certainly. after we have a short break. Certainly. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> okay, so we're back from our little break. Yeah. And uh, thanks for Stuart for waiting for us. He doesn't have to go to the toilet like we do. <laughs> Thank goodness for that, eh, Stuart? It's a, <laughs> it's a good thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so we were discussing now more pulling it into line with regard to what he observed in my particular body yeah, okay. over the period he observed me. Yes, so this is this is a this is fascinating mm -hmm. actually. Well, it's fascinating now in hindsight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Confusing uh, uh, beforehand. <laughs> well, and and one of the things I'm continually having to face uh, yeah. at the moment is is my ignorance, and as you know, I've had some some problems with acknowledging. Yeah. My ignorance publicly, and so it's a lot to do with that dad emotion, isn't it? Yes. Mm. Yes, but yeah. um, 
I'm feeling a bit more relaxed about it, but uh, <laughs> uh, so let me discuss what. Can, can I say before you do though that you doing that though is really good for our listeners because they they get to see that like okay, it's not like as soon as you pass everything is known and everything mm. is great and you know these are basic truths that people on earth sort of believe. If they believe in an afterlife, they believe that all of a sudden you know everything after you pass. That's one of the main problems with yes. the earth belief. And, and to see that that's not the case and you, you're still going to have to exercise humility and awareness and, and, and you can desire ignorance and you could ignore it. These are all good things for people to observe, I feel. And I think for myself, I mean, um, I've always been interested in the, in the furtherance of my knowledge mm -hmm. uh, and education and so I did enter this life fully uh, open to that process and I engaged it very mm. strongly but mm. um, this process in in engaging with you directly after observing you for so long has been very beneficial for me to see that even one even when one feels that they are engaged in an open way in learning mm. and gaining knowledge and seeking knowledge, one is still very much limited by these other factors that you helped me expose. Mm. Um, so there's certain areas, especially in relation to God and my father, mm. that I haven't been willing to acknowledge within myself and that very much affected how I approached learning, but also the areas where I looked and what I perceived might be possible. And, mm. and all mm. of these things about uh, uh, reasoning and uh, inquiry were affected by those other factors. Mm. And so, um, mm. and even uh, my issue with my father of feeling that um, uh, when exposing uh, when con conversing with another male, uh, their uh, their inherent desire was to compete with mm. me and mm. expose me, uh, mm. and so. Um, Which is very sad, really. Is it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Very it sad is. that most men on the planet learn to compete with other men, mm. and it's very sad that um, how much it, it does inhibit growth of everybody. Really, mm. it's, a, it's yeah, mm. sad. Yes, it's mm. a, it's a problem mm, big problem for men on earth mm. and, and here <laughs> yeah I, and particularly in the lower spheres too mm. yeah I, I understand that too mm. yeah so yes so returning to your uh example yep so at the time of your incarnation mm. uh, um that's around the time i became sort of interested in you, although I would say it wasn't until your birth that I was particularly present. So now this is a bit different from the last discussion we had where we said it was about eight years of age. So well, yes, that's right. So is so, there needing to be a correction of our last discussion <laughs> here? Or? No, no, no. no. Okay. Let me let me. And the word present is perhaps not the, that wasn't correct. Right. Um, so I became aware of talk if you if you like yes about you um in the early years of your life and around the time of your birth there was some um chatter mm -hmm. if you will mm -hmm. about um something unusual happening mm -hmm. now I, I did say present and it's not correct mm -hmm. um i was able to speak and see images <laughs> right yeah from people afterwards yes um and i didn't actually go prior to that point so you didn't uh, go to the point of conception no. right so it was just to the point of birth yes yes um and that's a whole other area that i realize now could have been investigated yeah yeah yes yeah, so so sometimes it, i say uh, mm, i see mm. oh yes what are you thinking <laughs> <laughs> uh well the medium sees it as this, as if i was present because i uh pic picture the memory correct of what i've observed 
And not all of your memories are your own pictures, they're mm. pictures given to you by others. Mm. And many people on earth get confused about this when they listen to spirits, you know, they, mm. they think that it's the experience of the spirit when it's not, the spirit's been told something from another spirit. Mm. <laughs> yeah. mm. Yes, mm. hence the confusion. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yes, that's good. yes. So, so would you like me to speak, and, and again, uh, I didn't follow you continuously uh, um, in terms of getting accounts from people mm -hmm. after that uh, birth moment. Birth, yeah. You know, I so, just have had a discussion with someone who was there yeah. and observed what they observed. And then the, I, I haven't investigated the intervening eight years. Yes, so you basically had periods of observation, but it was given to you prior to eight years of age, my eight years of age. You had periods of observation that was third party observation. No, not even periods, just yeah, the just, one. Just the one, the birth. Yes. The birth. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. Hmm. Good. Yes. Okay, so at the birth time, from what others observed, that you gave, they, and they gave you pictures of that, mm -hmm. were there any indications when, when you looked at that? Were there any indications that there were these attachments? Well, no, mm. but this is another, this is where I was speaking about the um, ignorance issue. Mm. I didn't really think to look at that. Uh, and certainly your spirit body itself didn't have any uh, obvious attachments. Mm. Mm. So you appeared to have, as I think, did we speak of this last time? A brighter body, or mm. certainly when you're eight, you mm. you had that, and at the time of birth, that, that was very uh, obvious. Mm. Also, which mm. is why I spoke to the person because I I wished to compare. Mm. And it would have been very difficult with the brightness of the body to see the dark things in it as well at that time. Well, this I pictures. don't know. Yeah. I I didn't investigate that. Yeah. Yes. And there was a, a few people, uh, Michael and Nicodemus and um, the Gabriel, were all present at my at my conception and right the way through. Mm. So those particular ones will be able to give you uh, information about you know when particular attachments actually occurred and, mm, I, and I'll so investigate. forth. So, yeah. Yes, and I'm sure they'll be able to give you some indications there in amongst their busy schedule looking after me. <laughs> 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 yes, and and I won't ask them now because that will take sure. the majority. And, and, uh, and then you'll get so focus. interested in that you won't yes. be interested in talking to us anymore. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So so by the time we got to eight years of age. Uh, yeah. So so now let's speak of my personal experience. Exactly. Yep. Okay. So at the age of eight, again, I wasn't particularly aware of any uh, spirit. Uh, attachment but that is not to say that I didn't observe a great number of spirits around you mm -hmm. so again this is where um, so you could easily see the spirits that were separate to myself yes but you couldn't easily see the spirits that were actually physically attached to my physical body and actually harming it no, yeah. I could see some issues in your physical, in your, sorry, in your, well, physical and spirit body. But couldn't understand the cause of it? No, not particularly, yeah, yeah. not particularly. And because your behaviour did not... Um, Match the injury? Yes. Yes, that would have been it, a bit confusing. It was, but yeah. everything about you was, uh, you know... Uh, <laughs> confusing, yeah, yes. even to me sometimes. An anomaly or, almost, yes. Yeah. And uh, so, so if we just have a look at that a bit more detail now, at the time of my eight years of age, did you actually understand that these nebulous sort of gaseous beings were actual people or is that also something that you didn't understand till later? No, that uh, that came later, that understanding. Good so idea. at Good this idea. time, um, and but to be fair, I didn't see any of them yes. around you. Yeah. I did see people uh, wishing to influence, as happens for all people on earth. Of course, yeah. Um, and I, I was able to observe um, at various times, um, and perhaps observe is the wrong word here as well. Um, I had awareness mm -hmm. that there was um, spirits higher than myself around you. 
because you, you could see the effects of them. Yes. But not see them specifically. Exactly. Yes. Which, exactly. And, and when you would have uh, seen that from other things as well, wouldn't you? Where a spirit survive, yes. uh, come to earth, you start to see their form as well and things like that. So Yes. And the, there's that. certain things that you can observe. Um, uh, what I found was it was at different points for myself um, of almost fasc fascination or openness towards my observation mm -hmm. and innocence, perhaps you could call it mm -hmm. towards my observation, where I would almost perceive spirits in a higher condition. I couldn't see a spirit form, mm -hmm. but it was like a glimmer almost, mm -hmm. if you could call it that. Mm -hmm. Or a sort of ghost. If we could look at it, think of it that way. Yes, it. but not in any... <laughs> not the same no. negative way that it is looked yes. at them. It, and in it some ways, it's a bit like seeing... Momentarily. Seeing the effects of the wind rather than the wind itself, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Mm. yes. And then occasionally a glimpse yes. of something for a moment. And that was very fascinating, mm. uh, as you can... Mm. But I quickly, um, as I began to progress I, and understood the limitations, um, that there were certain limitations present that then were no longer present, I I deduced that what I was seeing was someone, and also that the condition I was in, everyone else appeared to be in that same condition with the same limit mm -hmm. of movement. Mm -hmm. I, I naturally deduced, well, perhaps this is entities or people mm -hmm. who are more progressed than myself mm -hmm. that I just catch a glimpse or, or, or a glimmer of or, mm. or, or a sense of. Mm. And in my case, uh, many of those spirits don't solidify themselves. Mm -hmm. And so that would have been difficult <laughs> at times to understand what they were doing there. Yes, mm. but, but I should also say that I have been visited by spirits from higher realms yes. in the course of my inquiries. Yes. And in fact, to discuss with uh, a spirit who was at your, kids, yes. uh, sorry, your birth. Yes. Um, they have visited me, but I, yeah. I do understand. But in each case, they solidified a more stronger form so that you could recognise them as a person yes. and so forth. Yeah. And once that began to happen, I could ask many questions mm -hmm. about the limitations and I began to understand the laws governing the spirit world very well. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Okay, so... so Ah, uh, yes, so back to this. So back to the attachments. Yes. Um, so I know that many of these spirits, and, and actually there's quite a few million of them attached to me at any one time, and particularly in my childhood, uh, in uh, before my birth, and I know that they attached me before my birth because of the effects that they've yeah. had on me after my birth too. So could I give you a quick summary, mm -hmm. and then perhaps I, I think you'll want to discuss that in more detail. Mm -hmm. uh, because also uh, inherent in what I say is the fact that I, as this was all occurring, I was also developing mm. in my knowledge and ability and capacities, and so... Um, that's why I said it's fascinating in hindsight, because if I was to visit you now at the age of eight, I suspect I would see some different things as well. Because mm. you don't know what you don't, you don't know what to look for if you don't know. That's sometimes. right. You don't know what you yeah. don't know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, at the age of eight, I was aware of... Um, this, because we're speaking here about a group of women, mm. there was particular, there was uh, indeed um, numbers of women around you who were obviously in a um, sort of darkened condition, for mm -hmm. want of a better terminology, who had some evil intentions towards you. Mm. Absolutely, mm. this was obvious. Mm. But I did notice a marked uh, jump. Uh, around the age of 12, mm -hmm. as you entered puberty, mm -hmm. there seemed to be an increase. Mm -hmm. And certainly in the malevolence mm -hmm. of the entities, the female ent the female people mm -hmm. uh, around you. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, at, again at 16, mm -hmm. um, it seemed to darken quite significantly then. Mm -hmm. And that that's when I would have said, okay, now there's some uh, some... Uh, influence occurring upon you and and I started to correlate the they started to take I, d I don't think that this is the same women but perhaps it is uh, I would need to do some more investigation but mm. at this 16 year old point this is when they started to appear very black 
Mm. Uh, in terms of the quality mm -hmm. of the body mm -hmm. and started to almost uh, lose form. Mm -hmm. Not in that squish state yet, but just losing form. Mm -hmm. And I began to observe that they were attached to you in certain places mm. and that they were having quite an influence over you and your decisions mm. at certain times. Yeah, and unfortunately, those particular uh, spirits were the better, the ones in better condition <laughs> um, compared mm. to the ones that were actually attached to me since mm. my conception or shortly after. So, because um, you could see them better, mm. that indicates the better condition. Mm. Uh, it, now, if we fast forward mm -hmm. um, through your life, because that that I was <clears throat> aware of that then, mm -hmm. and this it. It's, a, it's not an insignificant group, mm. that darkened group that I mentioned that I first became s sort of a, quite aware of when you were 16. Mm. This remained with you for a long time and mm. worsening and the larger group. Mm. Um, and if we fast forward to now, um, what and it was very interesting to have these interactions and observations of different things over the course of your last month um, because now I'm quite aware of and I'm quite frightened in fact of quite um, that the, the, there's quite a lot of spirits around you mm -hmm. <laughs> um, much more than I was willing to uh, acknowledge could possibly be there. Mm. Mm. in times gone past and, and the and many of them extremely malevolent as well which makes it um difficult mm. 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 and and now it's there's i'm aware of this sort of frenzied mob mm. uh who who have the very gremlin like appearance if mm. you for want of a better mm. terminology yeah who we've just recently put under yes. a little bit of restriction yes um, and that was fascinating also mm. because as you know i have been so um in avoidance of the issue of god mm. uh it was only in this and i still feel quite emotional about it but in this uh instance just now that i was it was almost as if I saw the light of God <laughs> uh, yeah. come down and uh, sort of envelop these people mm -hmm. uh, to create the restriction. Mm. Uh, and mm. fascinating. Yeah, it's amazing. Isn't fascinating. It? Mm. And just that there can be such a um, such a strong, powerful influence that is loving mm -hmm. yet at the same time restraining mm. this is it does spark my desire to to learn more and know more of god mm. yeah yeah so there's so many wonderful things when it comes to the investigation of god of course that mm. far exceed the wonderful things associated with the human soul mm. <laughs> yeah so um 